Hello, my Houston friends. This is Jason Hammond, the life science educator and the ACE team manager for the Children's Museum of Houston inside our beautiful invention convention. Here today to talk to you about making. And I have a very specific thing that we are going to make today, which I'm very, very proud of and I hope all of you enjoy doing. And I really want to thank the good people at Total for allowing me to uh, make this video for you all. So let's all give them a round of applause. A round of applause. All right. So first of all, let's discuss what making is. Uh, basically making is taking available materials and going ahead and using those available materials to make something. Now, obviously, generally there is some sort of um, idea behind what we're gonna make. We might say make a lighthouse out of all this stuff or make um, a water catcher or make a water filter or all kinds of things. But today what we're going to make are birdhouses. And we are only going to use three things to make our birdhouses. We are going to use popsicle sticks, we are going to use a glue gun, and we are going to use glue sticks or the glue gun. Now, in a pinch, if you don't have a glue gun or the glue sticks, Elmer's glue will work. But every time you glue something, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer before you start the next step if you use like Elmer's glue or any other kind of like um, bottle glue, okay? Because the glue gun works a lot, lot faster. Now, I'm going to tell you why we're going to make the birdhouses in a minute. All right, first of all though, I just want to talk about the idea again of making of just taking these materials and putting it together. I'm gonna to make the birdhouse a certain way. It's gonna look like this, all right? I'm gonna take a look around at it. All right, this is what my birdhouse looks like. You don't have to make your birdhouse look like this. Uh, I'm just gonna show you how to make this particular type of birdhouse, and if you're like, eh, I don't really like that type, I'm gonna make my own type, feel free. But the whole idea is, only use popsicle sticks, the glue gun, and the glue sticks to make it. I'm not gonna use anything else, no other tools. Well, I'm gonna use this uh, box right here. I'm not gonna use what's inside the box, but you'll see what I'm gonna use the box for in a minute, all right? It's just to kind of balance things, all right? And I'm only gonna use it one time. So, that's the, that's the key, is whatever design you come up with, still only use the available materials that I have given you. And it's a great thing to do because it helps you learn to solve problems. It helps you get into the idea of being an engineer, which is a huge thing in Houston. We're full of engineers. It's a great, great thing. You know, we have the space program, we have oil. So we have a lot of engineers working in this city. Now, the other thing I really, really, really want you all to understand is that although this is a fun activity, Science is always fun, engineering is always fun, making is always fun. It also can be a little dangerous, okay, especially if you're using a glue gun. And the reason why I say that is that the glue gun can get really hot and we don't want anyone burning themselves. So just have an adult with you while you're doing this. Don't have them take over the glue gun, but they can help you not touch the parts of the glue gun that could possibly give you a burn. So yeah, science is fun and great, but be cautious is what we're asking you. Now, to make the birdhouse, we're gonna need a little bit over 100 popsicle sticks. So you're gonna have to gather quite a bit. I would say get at least 125. You might not use 125, but that's about the amount you wanna make to get a birdhouse of this style. Also, the other thing about making is, is like, yeah, okay, you've made the birdhouse this way or your own way. If you have other things you wanna try after that, that's fine. If you wanna paint it, that's fine, all right? I just don't want to sit here and paint it for you all because that would be like watching paint dry. Literally just me sitting there painting, you would all just tune out. So uh, I encourage you to do that though because it makes it look prettier and nicer and cooler. All right. So we're going to go to do this uh, step by step. All right. We're going to make a floor, then we're going to make some walls, then we're going to figure out how to make the roof, then we're going to figure out how to enclose it. So we're actually going to come close in on the action of what we're doing. I'll do a little voiceover as, you, as I'm doing it, and then it's gonna be a lot of just watching me do it. And uh, just to give you an idea of how to make this particular style of birdhouse. Okay, you wanna get started? Good. First thing we're gonna do is the floor. Okay, everybody, to make the floor of this particular style of birdhouse, once again, you can kinda see the floor right here. What you're gonna do first is you're gonna line up eight pops. 
popsicle sticks. Now, the reason why I'm doing eight popsicle sticks is because that's pretty much the length of one popsicle stick, like this, all right? This is what I have this uh, Reynolds wrap box for, is to sort of keep them even, so that when I'm gluing them together, they stay together and they don't start to fall apart and get me frustrated and having to do it over and over and over again. So I'm gonna put one stick on the end here, one stick on the end over here, and one in the middle. So for the beginning, you're gonna need 11 popsicle sticks. And the thing about the popsicle sticks is you gotta remember is that no popsicle stick is the same. They're all uneven and whatnot. They're not all the same width. They're a little bit wonky sometimes. So you just gotta work with it. There might be um, some little bits and pieces that you have to fix later on when you're doing this. But let's just get this floor started. So I got my glue gun here, and I'm just gonna glue right across the whole thing. And then I'm gonna very carefully put my stick on, right there, and press down. And I'm gonna give it a second, and then I'm just gonna flip it around and do the other end. All right. And you're gonna need probably two to three glue sticks, maybe four, to uh, get all the glue you need. There's quite a bit of gluing going on, obviously. All right. Now you don't have to put one in the middle. I do for stability. I do it for stability. So go ahead and put one in the middle. All right. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna build this up. So you're gonna put one here and one here. You know what I'm saying? And then you're gonna put one right here and you're gonna build it up maybe like four times the height that you're already at. All right, so you're just gonna dollop a little glue there, a little glue there, a little glue there. And you're gonna put your stick on. Do the same thing on the other side. There. 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 And then you're gonna stick it on. And you're just gonna keep doing that. Alright? So, watch me do it. Okay, so now we're gonna make walls for the inside. Going this way and this way, but we also have to make a door. If you notice, you gotta have a door so the birds can get inside. And then the back wall is clean. All right, and then you have these little slats over here to put air inside. So to make the wall, what I do is, is I take five popsicle sticks and I glue them all together. So first of all, that makes all the sides of the wall even. Second of all, it gives it some um, stability when you start to make the roof, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and make just one of the uh, walls for y'all, the rest I prepped so that you want to see me do this over and over and over again. There's your, uh, there's your wall. I'll just give it a second to dry up. And what you're basically gonna do is you're gonna put some glue right on here and you're gonna stick it to the side, all right? We'll do the part that has the door first and then we'll do the back wall, all right? So, watch me make a wall. So that's 
gives it stability having those sides up like that. Now don't worry about if it leans a little bit, it's okay. It'll all come together when you make the uh, roof and the uh, side walls. Alright, and I'm going to do another one. And then I'm going to stick these two together and you'll see how I do that. It's real simple, I'm just going to dollop some glue in between them, right here at the top. And then I'm just going to push those together. And then you have some real good stability there. Alright. I gotta do the other side, so instead of going this way, I'm gonna come over here so I can make that opening. the back wall going across this way so that's why I'm going to turn it this way so that you can see me do the wall so how I do the back wall is I do it's six across so I do them like this and then I start on the other side and then I kind of glue them all together so they're stable okay all right so let's go ahead and get that wall ready So those are your inside walls. Next up, we're gonna start the roof. All right, cool. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and make the roof and we're gonna make a slanting roof. Like you can see it sort of slants down, which means on the back wall, I made this uh, uh, popsicle stick, uh, 10 size popsicle stick that we're gonna stick to the top of these. And we're only gonna put one here and then we're gonna put the roof slats on top, okay? So you need a lot of glue on this. So these would be almost like support beams of the house. And then you just basically take them and just stick them on like that, go across. So you just, Thing we're gonna do are the outside walls. We don't want this open because then other birds will fly in. We want this to be like a single bird home. This actually would be perfectly acceptable. You can finish here if you wanted to. But the outside walls allow the bird to come in, build their nest, and then other birds can't see it from all the other sides, all right? Or predators. So what we're gonna do to build the outside walls is we're basically, again, gonna get our popsicle sticks. This, and, and this time we're just gonna put them these. 
And I basically do put a whole strip on this one because it's hard to, to figure out where you want the glue, so I just put a whole strip. now have a completed birdhouse in the construction part. So come on back and we'll talk a little bit more. Okay, now you can see that we have a completed version of a birdhouse. Again, you do not have to make your birdhouse this way, but notice I used no other tools except for my glue gun and my popsicle sticks and of course my glue sticks. So this is just one part of what I want to talk about today. Right now I'm going to head over to our eco station, which is outside and talk about why it's an important thing to make birdhouses. Not just an aesthetic thing, like something like, oh, that's cool that I made it, it's pretty looking, I like it, but how it does help birds out. So join me at the Eco Station in a moment. Thank you. We are now here in our Eco Station, uh, our environmental area of the Children's Museum. Uh, we went from the Invention Convention where we built our birdhouse, and I wanted to come up to here to uh, sort of put this birdhouse into action or ways in which you can put it into action. First of all, why is a birdhouse important for birds? Well, it gives them a very, very safe place to build their nest. When birds build their nests in trees, they are subject to predation. You know, other birds eat other birds and whatnot. And so their eggs might get uh, eaten. The, the bird itself might get attacked and they'll fly off and not come back to their uh, uh, eggs and whatnot. So you just want to be really, really uh, helpful to them by building these birdhouses. Now where you place your birdhouse is not really that much of a big deal. You can actually, there's a tree over here behind me. If you wanted to, you could nail it to the tree. You could also hang it on a post. That's the typical way in which most people put their birdhouses. They sort of nail it on a post, maybe seven or eight feet tall. But you can also put the birdhouse down on the ground. It's not a big deal at all. You can put it on the ground and some birds will go right in there and build their nests on the ground. Uh, there's a birdhouse over here that we'll talk about in a minute for our eco station. It's really, really high up. It's probably 15 feet high or something like that. But if I were to put my birdhouse right at the uh, base of that birdhouse, the birds would go into mine as well. They would be perfectly happy to do so. It doesn't have to be high or anything like that. Now, how is it good for you and your environment to have a birdhouse? Well, if you get birds starting to live around you, if you have them living around you, they will eat the insects that attack your garden. They'll eat all the bad things like the aphids and whatnot. So your gardens will grow better. Um, it's a nice environment to have birds around. You know, they sing songs and they make the uh, area a lot more pleasant for you when you're out gardening. Right now there's a bird flying around, I can hear it. So it kind of helps in your, in your own kind of psychological well-being, if you will. Um, they also, when they eat food, because technically speaking, your birdhouse could also be like a bird feeder. You could put like bird food inside. Some of the uh, seeds that they don't eat, they'll drop into your garden and those seeds will germinate in the plants. And typically in the bird seed, it's usually local plants that they're uh, giving out because that's what birds do. They help move seeds around to help plants grow. So that's all the benefits of a birdhouse. And that's why when you make a simple one like this, it's, you can immediately put it out. Like, if you have a porch, you stick it on the porch, birds will go in they'll be very happy. And it's up to you to decide whether you want it to be a house or a place for them uh, to get food. Also, they can get water out of there. It's a safe place for them to get water. So you can think about that as well. Now, before I go, I do want to mention that coming up, uh, Saturday the uh, 19th of September is World Cleanup Day. And that's sort of the reason why we're uh, giving you this series of videos this week to kind of talk about the environment and help to keep the environment clean. And I'll say this about uh, birdhouses. 
If you put trash on the ground, they will pick up that trash and use it for their nest. And it's not necessarily good for them. So if you want to put your birdhouse out, make sure the area around is clean. Clean up all the uh, strips of paper, any kind of aluminum foil or, or styrofoam or anything like that. And your birds will be much, much happier and their nests will be much cleaner and safer for their young. Okay, so that is what you'll do with your birdhouse. I hope you enjoyed making it. I hope you enjoy setting it up and I hope you get some birds inside of it. And I really hope we get to see you soon. And I just wanna say one last time, I'm Jason Hammond. I am the life science educator and the uh, manager of science programs outreach and really hope to see you soon and have a great day. Bye. So as a small postscript, I should mention that the Children's Museum of Houston in our eco station, we have a birdhouse. It's right up there. Uh, it's a much fancier birdhouse than the popsicle birdhouse, but if you look closely, if you can see the hole of the entrance for the birds, it's not much smaller than this one. So it's a really good birdhouse for like the blue jay that's also singing inside the tree behind me. So even in our small little eco enclosure here, we have a birdhouse to help seed it, to help get rid of the insects, and to help protect the birds. So yay, Children's Museum of Houston! We will see you soon.